We're focusing on the senseless murder of 16-year-old Brianna Jai, which shocked the nation when she was stabbed to death in broad daylight by two teenagers in a frenzied and ferocious attack last February. And ahead of her killer's sentencing next week, we're joined by Brianna's mother, Esther, to speak about her funny, witty, fearless daughter and why she's now dedicating her life's work to helping others. But first of all, here's Maddie Dunn with a reminder of her story. Such a heart-rending statement there from Brianna's mum, Esther, who joins us now this morning alongside Brianna's head teacher, Emma Mills. I mean, Esther, what do I say? It just utterly traumatising for you. You've spoken to us before, but not since the sentencing. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you feel knowing the sentences for life, the minimum term will be um, revealed shortly, but, but how are you feeling right now about whether justice has been done for Brianna? I think the only way that I can describe is how I'm feeling is just pure relief. Um, yeah, I, f I feel like I don't know whether justice will ever be done for Brianna. Like, I feel like it would just be nice to have her back home. Like, that's, that would be justice for me. Um, but obviously, that isn't going to happen. But knowing that they are going to prison and they're going to have a long time, um, hopefully forever, sent, um, in prison, it's a massive relief because, like, during the trial, it was a bit of a, a roller coaster. Um, you always had that little seed of doubt that maybe the jury would come to the decision that they were not guilty. So hearing that guilty plea, it was just a massive sense of relief. Mm. I, I think you've shown an extraordinary compassion um, throughout this trial, particularly for the families of those teenagers who were responsible for Brianna's murder. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if, as a mum, you feel like as more than one life has been lost in this case. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think I always get emotional when I, I think about the parents because I saw how they were in court and um, like how distraught they were when the, when the verdict came through. I could like, see myself in them the way that I felt when I heard that um, Brianna had been murdered. Um, and yet they've, they've also lost a child and they've not only lost a child, but they've got to deal with like what's happened for the rest of their life now. Um, I also think that, like, when do we stop blaming the parents? At what age? At what age do you stop blaming the parents? Nobody goes out to, it's like, for the, nobody wants their child to commit such a crime. Nobody sets out to, to bring a child up like that. Um, so, yeah, that's why I felt that people needed to show some empathy and compassion to them as well, because I don't think they need a constant reminder of what their child has done. They know very well what their child has done. And you've, you've done that with kind of huge generosity and compassion towards the families. But, of course, you know, it's you who's suffered the biggest loss, the loss of Brianna. And we saw in the, um, the film there some, some pictures and we heard the, um, the sound. But um, tell us more about Brianna and... Um, how she was and um, and what you grieve for every day. Mm -hmm. She was an absolute character. She was um, she was very outgoing. She um, yeah, she absolutely she loved attention. Um, she was she was she was so funny as well. And I I, I miss her laughter so much. Like I miss her coming down and. Even <laughs> she was just a normal teenager, and I even missed the grief that she gave me, just as <laughs> as, as teenagers do. There's always plenty of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but but yeah, so we we miss her so much. Um, yeah. I one of the things I find would be very hard for you as mum is not really knowing what happened, mm -hmm. because in this case, the two teenagers blamed each other. And one of them went mute mm. and gave evidence by text. And neither of them has admitted responsibility or, it seems, told the real story. Yeah. And as awful as that would be to know, does, is that something that you wrestle with? Not really, no. I think that I know as much as I need to know. Right. And the fact that they've both been found guilty, then that's that's enough for me, yeah. I think. That... So even though their defence was it was the other person, you know now 
because a court of law has established mm -hmm. they were both responsible. Yeah, and I think the fact that they both pointed the finger at each other, it also shows that the, the cowards, really, and um, it, it shows the character of, of each of them. So um, maybe if they had have admitted or shown a little remorse, then I might have felt some sympathy for them still. But the fact that they were both pointing the finger and neither of them admitted anything and there was no emotion there, then yeah, it's, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel guilty that they've been sent to prison. And what minimum term? do you want to see when the judge sentences them finally to, to prison? Um, I think just as long as possible, really. Mm. Um, at this moment in time, I don't feel like there is any rehabilitation. Um, so if not forever, but I don't know, this, this could change. I, I, don't, I don't know how I would feel further on down the line, whether they did show any kind of change in the behaviour or... Mm. But right now you would back a whole lifetime. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Emma, can I ask you, you were um, in court supporting Esther all the way through, so you saw the detail. You were Brianna's um, head teacher, but you have a huge amount of experience with them, seeing young people um, in these, um, you know, as they're growing up. And we know now, I think, from the trial that there was, with teenagers, the, with X and Y, the, um, the two um, uh, people who committed this, this crime, there was a pattern of behaviour going back quite a long time. Um, was that something that you think the parents or the teachers or any of us, were there signs? Are there lessons you draw in your profession going forward from what you've seen in this case about how we can spot this kind of behaviour and catch it early? In terms of what I heard in court about that pattern of behaviour, it all seems to be online. Um, and I think maybe the, mess the lessons to be learned are maybe about online safety. Um, I know that there's a new online safety bill that was signed into law in November, and that is very focused on child safety online um, and the responsibility of social media sites, especially to protect children and to things to be flagged up. So I think in terms of lessons learned, I think it is really about that online safety and online behaviour. But there wasn't something that parents or teachers could have spotted themselves? From what I heard in court, um, the, interactions between the two of them it was it was online so right. I think it's it's how um it's how we can reflect how for instance in our school we do a lot of work around online safety in that there's filters on the um on the wi-fi so that certain things can't be accessed or if a student is on a school, a school device everything that they type in mm. is almost recorded by the school system so things are flagged up um, and we also do parenting courses where we ask parents to come into school. Mm. We talk about different social media sites, how to put checks on the phone, how to look through them. Um, and I really think that that's something that's, that's really important. And I know a lot of schools do but that. But it's hard already. to be a parent or a teacher when this whole thing is happening outside yeah. of our sight. We can't see it. We may yeah. be not have experienced it ourselves in the same way as young people are experiencing it. It's tough, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I think it's really tough. Um, I think especially since the pandemic, I think what happened during the pandemic is young people relied so much on the online world, especially for their social interactions. Mm -hmm. And therefore, as we've come out of the pandemic, that part of their life is so much bigger than it was before. And you now you know, I'm 43 and when I was growing up, there wasn't the internet, there wasn't social media. So this generation are growing up in a way that's, that's very different mm -hmm. to how any teenagers have grown up before. Esther, um, Ed referred to the two defendants as X and Y, because, mm -hmm. of course, up until now and up until sentencing, their identities haven't been revealed, but the judge has said that their identities will be revealed, and that obviously will have ramifications for not just them, but their families as well. You back their identification, don't you? She's unusual in a case like this because they're under 18. Yeah, yeah, so my reasons for backing it is that um, when they are 18, the names will be released anyway. Um, I think that, so it's, it's inevitable and we might as well just get it all done in one go, the sentencing, release the names, and then we can hopefully like, move forward and, and do something more positive. It's, it's that, that sense of closure really for, for me and my family. And what, I know this is a bit hard to imagine for anybody who, who 
knows what you're going through, but what positives are you able to find right now? Because you are running a campaign, aren't you, mm -hmm. to try and improve the mental health, the stress, the anxiety that our teenagers are, are going through. You're putting your energy into that. Yeah, yeah. So when Brianna was here, she um, she actually struggled with mental health. So she was self-harming. She had an eating disorder. She um, she had anxiety. So she, she was so complex because on one side, she seemed like this such a confident mm. person, but on the other side, she had all of these difficulties. Um, so because of my experience with Brianna, I wanted to try to like help other young people. Um, so we started the Peace in Mind campaign. Mm. And we're so close to the target now, so we'll be able to get a mindfulness teacher in every school in Warrington. And I'm hoping to get this spread out across mm -hmm. England as well. So I'm in talks with, um, with our local MPs and hopefully we're going to get it in Parliament and get things moving, moving there. Um, we think it would be great if um, mindfulness could be part of the PGCA, mm -hmm. so the teacher training, and then it's just embedded then. Yeah. Well... To be able to find a purpose in the wake of what's happened is, is you know, so important, isn't it? Esther, thank you for being so honest with me. Emma, thank you very much thank indeed you. for thank being you. with us. And we send you all our love.